Hey, what to do everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day. So today's video is going to be a little bit on the longer side. I want to grab some popcorn or a snack or something along those lines, but we're going to be doing quite a bit to the water truck right here. You guys can see that I picked up a new shifter knob. So for those of you who are not truckers and may not be familiar with exactly what this shifter knob is, this is more than just a place to rest your hand. It actually serves a purpose. Air comes in and out of here, splits between high and low range. So I'll explain a little bit more about these numbers later on in the video. And then another thing that we're going to be switching out on this truck, which is a super easy fix, is this guy right here. This is a pressure regulator. For those of you who watched the last video, I briefly talked about it. Um, this basically controls the amount of air pressure that can go to the control tower for all the sprayers. There is like an ideal pressure setting for that instead of being like full tilt boogie. So this basically takes care of that. There might be some other stuff that makes its way into this video, but if you guys enjoy it, let's go on jumping onto it and let's roll. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my So the first fix, which is gonna be the easiest one, I'll go ahead and give you guys a quick walkthrough. This is our, I call it the control tower. Basically has all the different valves for the different sprayers and whatnot. Has the PTO handle right here. So this entire panel right here is fed by one airline. I think it comes into the PTO first and then it like tees over to this guy, tees over to this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. So if you were to take a look underneath that top panel, it could have definitely been done prettier, but everything worked. And last week when we started this thing up, I aired the system up, everything was working. You guys saw me run through the valves. It was like a super exciting day. I went over to Ryan's to show him and it just like, wah, wah, everything quit working. So after I was done making a fool of myself because I went over to Ryan's house and I was like, hey, check out my water truck. And then it didn't work. I started going through the process of elimination real quick, basically like starting at that valve and working my way back, seeing where there was no air. So it didn't take me very long to actually find out where the problem was. Basically I traced the lines back and came to this guy right here. Now the old one's taken out, but there used to be another one of these right here. And what this is right here, this is a pressure regulator that allows those valves up top to work at like the specific air pressure that they need to control these air valves. So I ended up just taking the old one out, plumbed it directly in. So it's getting way more air pressure than it actually needs to make these things work. So we're gonna go ahead and fix this. This is the super easy fix. It's basically just take these off, put this back on, thread it back in. Should only take me about five minutes. Well, sometimes five minute projects turn into like 15, 20 minute projects because I was uh, trying to rotate this guy a little bit to actually make this tank drainable. You guys can see that it hasn't been drained in quite some time, but this used to face that way, which was super inconvenient. So I was trying to rotate it this way and well, it broke off. So I've got to drill and tap this out now, which will probably add a little bit to the project. All right, fix number one in the bag. You guys can see we got the new regulator on here. It's all plumbed back up. Had to put the new drain valve in, which means I had to take all this off, reseal it all, but it's all back together. So we're gonna go ahead and pressurize the system and see if she holds it. All right, so the system is fully pressurized and we still just have the same leak that's somewhere back up in there. But as far as this all goes, we are good to go. Now the next step is to go up here to the control tower and uh, see if stuff works, I guess. That's a big negative. What's going on here? So I may have lied just a little bit. Apparently the system was not fully pressurized, but I think we're there now. We went ahead and got her built up to about 100 pounds. And uh, you guys can tell that she is doing what she's supposed to now. All right, so I'm gonna be 100% honest. Uh, I don't know where all these hoses go, and I kind of messed up because I didn't really label anything, but I went ahead and pre-plumbed these all in. I'm gonna go ahead and take off this guy. And I don't know why, but it's got some like Xbox gamer tag on there. I'm gonna go ahead and take that guy off. So it's got a little tension nut right there that I already loosened up, but go ahead and take this guy off. All right, back that off. Tighten this guy back up. So not that it's like a huge deal, but I am just like a little bit sad. The original shift knob 
did say Fuller Road Ranger on it. I was kind of hoping the replacement one would as well, but it does not, but it is shiny. So went ahead and got it on there. Now I got to run all the hoses through. So now it's time for the tricky part. On the back side, it does have like a somewhat of a diagram. It says E, D, S. I don't know what that stands for. I need to do a little bit of research. I'm assuming that's gonna help me figure out where each hose goes because I honestly have zero clue. And as you guys can see, it used to have like color coded hoses. When I went to go buy the hose to replace them, they did not have any color coded hoses and I screwed up because I didn't label anything, but I'm gonna go ahead and get it figured out. Then hopefully we have high and low range afterwards. All right, so fun fact, this shifter knob has three ports on the bottom of it. Now, since I'm not the original owner of this truck and I didn't know what had been done, what hadn't been done to this thing, I thought maybe they had taken out the third port. So as I'm looking on the transmission, I can only find two ports where hoses actually hooked up to. So I went ahead and hooked up those two ports and lo and behold, that third hole is not necessary. I don't know what it's for, but it is shifting between high and low range now. And I'll go ahead and show you as you guys flip this thing, you guys hear the transmission flipping around down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain the markings on the shifter a little bit. Basically, you guys can see that we have one, two, three, four, and I'm not sure how well it's gonna show up on camera, but basically you just drive it like a normal car. You'd put it in first, go down to second, third, fourth, and then when you're done, you're gonna shift it into high range and then you'd start over. You'd go into fifth, sixth, seven, eight. So all in all, it's a super basic concept. It's just like shifting a four speed car twice. And that's really all it is. So it is possible that I did do one thing incorrectly and that is that I reversed these lines. Uh, the only real way to know is to actually know how to work on these transmissions and have a manual or take it for a test drive. So we're gonna go ahead and take it for a little test drive, see which one's low range, see which one's high range. And then from there, I'll be able to decide if I wanna flip it or just tell whoever drives this thing, you know, this is high range, this is low range or vice versa. All right, we got all the tools moved out of the way. Last thing I need to do is uh, turn this screw in. I really wish this part would show up. I ordered that thing like a week ago, but for now, we'll just screw that in, get this hood down, get the truck fired up, let it warm up a little bit. Okay, make sure she's in neutral. Oh, baby. Yeah, so I totally crisscrossed the lines. Really not a big issue. I'll just disconnect it from this one and then switch it over to that one. But the actual shifter knob does work. We can go between low and high range now, which is like a huge benefit because when this thing was stuck in high range, the problem with that is that when you go to start off, it's kind of like starting your car in maybe like third gear. Then you got to feather a clutch and just give it a ton of gas, which will all in all destroy the clutch in these trucks. So stuff like this guys gets me super excited and I don't want to seem like super dorky, but I'm just like mega happy right now. So little by little, we're going to get this truck 100%. I'm going to throw some more water in it, actually test the sprayers because I just know that they have air to them, but I want to make sure that it's the correct pressure that all the sprayers actually work. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with water, run a couple tests. So it doesn't take so long to fill up, we're gonna go ahead and start pumping some serious water. You're doing good, pig. So not having the high and low is not like a huge deal when it's empty, but when you got water in the back and your truck weighs, you know, 30, 40, 50, maybe even close to 60,000 pounds when this thing's completely full, that's when you really need the low gears. And so now that we're in low, let's go ahead and uh, see how she does. I could go into like low, low, but I'm only half a tank and I don't think we'll need to. So let's see how she takes off because before, and it was a struggle to get her moving. Oh, cake, super easy. Having that low gear is so much nicer. All right, now test number two. Let's go ahead and see if the PTO turns on. All right, there we go. We'll go ahead and do the, uh, the side sprayer. Oh, I messed up somewhere. 
Oh, they're all on, they're all on. Okay, here we go. There we go. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and do a quick run through on all the sprayers and see how they work. <laughs> it seals it up now. Dang, that thing dumps a lot of water. Well, 100% man. You ready to go to water truck school? I already have OSHA certifications. <clears throat> Class A, brother. And we're going to try and protect this truck the best that we can because if a fire ever rolls through here again, these water trucks are like super, super handy to have. Uh, the old yeller that you guys have seen on the channel before, my father-in-law's massive six by six. When the fire came through here last time, that truck was literally out like spraying water on the flames. Super, super cool. So we want to keep this truck in best shape as we can. So I'm going to go and take this truck down to the hay barn because I think she has earned a spot next to the heavy haul. We're going to keep her out of the sun, out of the elements to try and preserve her the best that we can. So if fire ever does roll through here, like when it came through and just burnt that entire side of the valley, we'll have this fire truck up and ready. Now I'm gonna go ahead and dump the rest of the water out. You guys, I'm super stoked. Such a good day. Well, that didn't last long. We're out of water already. So down to the hay barn we go. All right, well, it is super dark underneath the hay barn, but one thing that you gotta do on these old trucks that don't have the built-in air dryers that the new Peterbilts have, you really should drain the air tanks daily. You guys see all that? Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my phone's light on so you guys can kind of see what comes out of the tank. You guys see all that water right there? So pretty much every big truck that you see on the road nowadays is gonna have like a super duper air dryer. You can pretty much breathe the air that my Peterbilt compresses to use for all the brakes, the air ride, everything else that uses air. It's like super, super clean. Whereas this guy, not so clean. Ton of moisture. It just is gross. So every day you're supposed to empty out the tanks or at least every other day. I would do it every day, every time you, because if not, you're gonna have a lot of components that end up failing. The moisture just wreaks havoc on everything. Kind of like the regulator that's on the um, control panel for all the sprayers. But anyways, look at the truck. She looks good. She's got a good spot. Looks really nice next to the Peterbilt. I think we need to paint her silver. The blue just doesn't match. But anyhow, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws to this video. Sun's getting ready to go down. Look at that beautiful sunset. But if you guys could do me a huge solid like, subscribe, share this with amigos, hit that notification button down below so you guys can see progress on whatever else we got going on. And I'll see you guys next time. Later.